Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the Rambling Podcast. Now, I'm aware that 47 is now missing. This is now number 48. In all fairness, I decided to quit just redoing the numbers every time social media removes one. So this is just going to be 48. 47 doesn't exist anymore. And if we hadn't repeated numbers, I'd probably be in the 70s now. But that's all right. I'm just going to do my thing, put it out, and yeah. We will see what they allow to stay and what they remove. But, you know, really all just comes down to one simple thing. If I was doing this for the money, I'm an idiot. If I was doing this for the fame, I'm an even bigger idiot. I do this because I like to talk about stuff. And... Seems like if I'm going to ramble and ramble, why let my poor little dog or Panda, you remember Panda, why let them be the only ones to benefit from my great, wonderful wisdom? Or be annoyed by it. So yeah, I'm going to keep putting it out. And when I get kicked off every social media platform there is, I will be that really weird guy standing out on a street corner shouting at the masses. Again. So I want to start this one off with a fun, happy story that does get me off on a ramble, a little side topic, but that's kind of what I do. All right, here we go. So, by the way, I've not read this yet. So if it turns out to be really stupid, then, well, sorry. Third generation craftsman goes viral. Now has millions watching him fix shoes as America's cobblers. America's cobbler. By the way, a cobbler is one who repairs shoes. Didn't know that. And I like my boots. And I had a pair of boots that was fuck. Old. Old, old. Uh, actually, are they? Wait, no. Um, they're in the other room. And I loved my boots. And I didn't want to get new boots, but fuck, man. The heels were like 60 degree angle. Fucking the sides were coming apart. One Just falling the fuck apart. And I was just not happy. And I was talking to a buddy. I was like, hey, uh, how can I fix these? Like, I need to add on to the heels so that they're level, somewhat level. Um, what glue would be best for getting that site? And he's like, take it to a cobbler. A what? A cobbler. There's a cobbler two towns over. Uh, Actually, it was across state lines. It was West Virginia. But yeah. Took my boots to the dude. And he was like, yeah, I can fix those. What? So I'm thinking, all right. $200 for a pair of boots. Got it. So this dude's going to charge me 100 bucks. He's like, all right. So for the stitching... Uh, that's $8, and for the heels being rebuilt, 
that's ten dollars so eighteen dollars it's like here's a 50. thank you and it's not because oh i'm so generous and i got money to throw around no it was i expected a hundred i'm sorry i was hoping for a hundred expected 150 it's like new boots are 200 but you can save 50 bucks by letting me fix these he's like 18 bucks what fuck that here's a 50 so yeah go to a cobbler like if you can find someone to fix your cool shit that you like instead of buying new stuff way cooler and generally way fucking cheaper like i had a car that i was big fan of and engine was fucked it's like all right well shit i got 900 dollars in savings get a new another used car I can probably put fifteen hundred down, and then make payments. Yeah, all right. And then this fucking troubled individual, very skilled person, but has his issues. Is like, I can get you. A, I can go get you an engine. Assemble the shit together, and boom. 500 bucks. Be as good as when you got it. Okay. Actually, for 350 it was better than when I got it. So I paid him 750 because that just... Yes, please. Keep doing that. Honestly, if he had more work doing that, he would have ended up down that path he went down. Skilled, talented fucking kid. Man. Just. I'm not going to say. Just say no to drugs. But. uh, Just say no to meth. Please. <laughs> meth. Does not end well. For people. Alright. It just doesn't. Like, you can find potheads, you can find alcoholics, you can find fucking cokeheads that make it work. Not saying you should be any of those. But, there's not all that many meth heads that make it work. Just saying. All right. So, you know what you call it when a cobbler is just getting waves and waves of shoes in? A shoe, Nami. This A plus dad joke can be attributed to Jim McFarland, America's cobbler, a viral internet star. Never heard of him. Oh. TikTok. Cool. People tune in to watch them fix shoes. My great uncle trained my grandfather. He had a shop in Anderson, Indiana, 1900. My grandmother was about 20 at a Hamilton, Ohio. I was in Hamilton. Not the point. Anyways. One of the world's oldest surviving professions spent more than 20 years at McFarland Shoe Repair in Lakeland, Florida. Okay. Indiana, Ohio, Florida. Cool. 19 pandemic, he tried something new. And his kid, of course, it's his daughter, started doing social media. And...
All right, pretty cool. Why is it? Why did it get all? Oh, there we go. this is viral on social media and all that. That's cool. Uh, I used to watch this on VF, things like this, little segments on this stuff. Yeah, it is interesting and relaxing and cool. And Let's be real, this dude charges way less than the new pair of shoes. And, you know, that's, yeah, look at that. Oh. Mm. Good stuff. I love my boots. I wish I had. So I got uh, some old biker boots, and they've got more miles on them than a lot of people's cars. And I got the coolest fucking dorkiest cowboy boots ever. Love them. Bought them in Portales, New Mexico. And shit. Mm. Want to show you something cool? Oh, I got this jacket in nineteen ninety six. Yes. And I have worn this jacket in five continents, maybe four, depends on how you want to look at it. But I was mugged in New Orleans while wearing this jacket, and it was like, Here's my wallet. Um, give me that jacket. Dude, you don't want this old beat up jacket. It's not worth anything to you. Years later, uh, someone shared this cowboy's hat or something. Some uh, real cowboy sang a song. This Chuck LaRue or someone can say who. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'll never get rid of this jacket, but the seams started to come loose. And this old cat, I was like, hey, uh, can you fix my jacket? He's like, Probably not. What's wrong with it? I was like, I mean, you're a leather worker. What's the issue? And I show him this and that. And right there. He took a piece of leather and just put those I forget what they're called signets, whatever, and made the fucking sleeves. They're gonna last. Now, as you can see, 
yeah, it was totally coming apart. But now, it's all good. And I was just... Fuck yeah. <laughs> Dude, you fixed it. I love this jacket. I've had this jacket for... Fuck. 20... Almost 30 years now. This jacket's almost 30 years old. You fixed it. Fuck you. He's like, all right, let's see. It's uh, $2 for the leather, $4 for the thing. I, uh, 10 bucks. Ah, uh, no, no. All right. No, we're not doing that. You're at least taking 20 bucks and I'm buying some shit from you. So I got this awesome leather holster and shit. I could look around and find other cool shit that I bought wallets for like three people. Like, Fuck yeah. One, that jacket's priceless. Two, if you're going to buy a brand new, no sentimental replacement for it, of that quality, when I got it, $275, 300 And I know, oh, I can find that jacket for 100 bucks. Yeah. But no, this is good quality leather. That's why it's fucking 30 years old. Uh, yeah, man. People used to take their TVs in to get them fixed. That's why they had floor model TVs with cool designs on the side. And it was like, this was the thing. And now they're just big screens that you mount on the wall and they don't exist. They're just, you know, screens for what you get. And that's not bad. That's not wrong. But it's TVs have become replaceable, cheap quality. Just, it's all about the function they do, nothing else. There's no, there. it's no longer the, and again, they're able to make them smaller and thinner and, you know, eventually it'll be fucking put on glasses and imaginary fucking screens and shit. But there was a time where they were the centerpiece of your living room. They were, if you're my age, you might remember your grandparents had that old TV, and, you know, get the chance to look at one and look at the intricate work and the design. And those old Magnavox, they weren't just a screen. It was more. You know, some had drawers put in them and they were basically your entertainment center and your TV and speakers and like all these different things. Because you're going to have this big ass fucking box. Let's make it cool. And I'm not saying that. Those times were better and these times suck. No, I'm not being that old guy. But I am going to be the old guy that says, Shoes are fucking shoes, man. Right? Why throw 20 bucks at Walmart? Probably not 20 bucks, but whatever. For a pair of fucking shoes to get you by. 
you got shoes that you like that I love these. Keep them. Oh, well, they're falling apart. Fix them. Right? We live in an age where I love my wife. I love my husband. Oh, this marriage is falling apart. We got to start fixing things. And I know that's a weird topic to get on from a leather jacket or a pair of boots or a cobbler. But if you love something, why throw it out? Because you don't feel like fixing it. Now, I'm not saying, oh, never buy a new pair of shoes again. Never buy jeans again. No. But don't get rid of something. If you can fix it. Just saying. Uh, my uh, dorky ass <laughs> cowboy boots. And... Oh, I picked out, I found the boots that I fucking wanted, right? Down in New Mexico, and I was like, oh, I want, this is what I want. And the guy's like, that's nice, but those are women's boots. I don't give a shit. I like those. He's like, no, no, I'm not saying you can't have them. I'm just saying those are women." That's the women's section. Uh, I can get you the same boots from the men's section, which is going to take me a couple days for the next delivery. Oh. Well, does it matter? Yeah, it's, it's going to matter with the sizes and this and that. And just look, let me measure your foot. And the men's size fits you better. We'll do that. It's like, oh. Okay. Oh. You're being very, you know, proactive and working hard to, for a customer. And turns out I, it would was better to wait for the men's boots. I got thin feet. Long feet, but when women have feet that length, apparently there's an issue with the whatever. It just, it worked better and apparently cost me less to get the uh, men's sized boot. So yeah, it was like, oh. All right, cool. Well, yeah. Well, let me pay the other price because that was more and you didn't have to help me out. I'm not rich. I just, you know, help out. Someone does you good. Try to do them good. And I know... Oh, save, save, save. Yes, save. But if it costs you $8 more a week to get your groceries at the mom and pop store that actually gives a shit, helps you out, instead of going to Walmart, do that. Now, if it costs you $60 more a week, all right, I get it. If you can't, don't. If you don't think that's worth it, then fuck yeah. I'm with you, man. But if you can throw a few extra bucks here and there to people that fucking, yeah, do it. Because how much do you waste on fast food? Like... Eat fast food one day less a week, and it'll give you money 
to be nice with. It's a sacrifice. But it's a good one. So yeah. Dude fixed my shoes. Like took care of my boots. Fucking cleaned and polished and shaped my Stetson. I have a Stetson. Uh, cavalry Stetson that I fucking heard. Yeah. Went to that dude for everything that was reasonable. I brought him business and he took care of his customers. And fuck yeah. If I was in New Mexico or within 100 miles, I would still go there. I would go there to buy boots for my fucking friends and family. Because Lord knows, a lot of my friends and family got Christmas gifts that were, wow. What made you think I would want a hat pin? Or, yeah, because, fuck yeah, throw this dude some business. So, came across a website, uh, hit Hollywood in Toto. Toto? Oh, is this a reference to Wizard of Oz? No, no. Christian Toto is the writer. And, uh, I've not looked into him intensely. He's won some awards as a film critic. Uh, he wrote uh, a book. And he has a podcast. And he also works for the Daily Wire, Newsbusters, Outkick, Just the News. I've heard of two of those. Uh, he wrote for National Review, The Federalist, People Magazine, New York Post. I knew all those. And he appears on the Lars Larson Show, which I don't know. And, uh, a radio station in D.C. And he's a member of the Critics' Choice Association and the Denver Film Critics' Society. Yeah. But he's got a website, Hit. So what I got it saved as. Hollywoodintonto.com And I've been reading a lot of his stuff, and I'm going to make videos on his stuff. I think I've done two videos on his stuff already but they've not published yet and gotta say i disagree and agree with this guy a lot but he always has a valid reason for why he's fucking wrong and Sometimes he has explanations on why I'm right. Everyone has an opinion, and I respect that. Whether you agree with me or you're wrong, I respect that. Everyone has an opinion. So, I wanted to talk about his article from two, three months ago. The very best 70s comedy movies. I gotta say, uh, he's not stupid. 70s had some good horror movies. 
but I will argue with him till the end of days. Hades better for horrors. But the 80s was great with horror movies because the 70s was a big fuck the rules. And they just went for it. And that is why the 70s had the best comedies for a long time. The 80s Comedies started to become cyclical, marketable. But horror movies were not marketable. They were still, you know, no one is going to make big deals about the horror movies. They're just going to make horror movies and people go and see them. But it wasn't cool to talk about. So. And his list is not ranked. But. All right. Animal House. Obviously, everyone loves Animal House. Or they can respect Animal House. I've noticed uh, as years have gone by, people watch Animal House and they're like, oh, that seems cliche. Yeah, they did it first. Uh, first time I watched Dirty Harry, I was like, oh, the car jumping thing, and oh, the... Yeah, this is... I don't get why it's so... such a big deal. I've seen it all. It's pretty standard. And an older person didn't yell at me and attack me and, you know, grab my ear while hitting me with the, on the other side and loosening a tooth. And... It was, yeah, yeah, it's absolutely everywhere now. But Dirty Harry did it first. Oh, which one? Oh, all of it. Right, but the... Yep. Right, okay, but the... Yep. So there's a scene in... Nope. Oh. Now, mall rats. Love mall rats. Love it. And apparently, I've always been an old man. Because my age group, I was like, oh, Don't you know, 10 years before we were born? Yeah. There's that scene where they're comparing scars. And... You know, some of my movie buff friends at the time were like, oh, I love that scene in Lethal Weapon. Three. Two. Fuck. There's Sharon Scars. I'm like, no, that's from Jaws. Jaws. Uh, Jaws is pretty old. I don't remember that well, but yeah, I, there was a thing. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Kevin Smith is referencing uh, the Lethal Weapon ones. But yeah, Lethal Weapon probably did get inspired by Jaws. No, Jay, look at the names of the characters. Hooper! Hooper! They named them after Jaws. Oh, did they? Oh, wow. I never would have got that. Dude. That's weird. That's like... A big loop-de-loop. -loop. So, yeah. People watch Animal House now, and they're like, uh, you know what? 
I like Van Wilder better. Well, yeah, you like Van Wilder better. But look at the time period and yeah. Which one's better? Mm. I'm going to lean towards Animal House, but I enjoy Van Wilder better. But without Animal House, Van Wilder wouldn't have had the inspiration on these things. American Pie people enjoy more than Porky's. But the people that made American Pie idolized Porky's. And anytime someone insinuates, yeah, greatest, and like, well, I mean, it, you know, we just tried to do Porky's for this generation. Oh, it's so much better. They're, they get like heartbroken. No, no. But yeah, uh, which one's better? Porky's has that scene. Wanted posters for a penis and she's so serious and everyone's cracking up. You cannot watch that and not laugh. And you can hold on and you can hold on and you're chuckling and and then when that camera pans to that fucking portrait of Eisenhower and his smart ass grin, you're done. You are done. My father who was uh, five to ten years too old for Porky's aimed audience. And his father, who was 30 years too old for Porky's audience, and my kids who are fucking 50 years too young for the audience, and my grandchild, when she's old enough to watch it. We could all be in the same room and watch that scene. And uh, we'd all have different levels of, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, everyone's laughing. Okay, yeah, that's pretty funny. But when that camera pans to the picture of the president, nobody cannot burst out. Now, does American Pie have scenes like that? Probably. Possibly. Possibly. Um, I never liked the pie fucking scene. It just, I've, I'm not a fan of embarrassing humor. I'm too empathetic. Like, I like, you want to humiliate the asshole and let's all laugh at him. He's a prick. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I can get on that. But the sad pathetic loser being exposed and humiliated. His dad catches him fucking a pie. I don't know. My empathy gets in the way and it's like, ah, uh, I'm not so much motivated to laugh at him. My immediate response is, oh my God, poor kid. 
And when I was younger than the character being portrayed, it was still, oh, oh, that's humiliating. But difference in personalities and generations. Porky's doesn't have anything that humiliates the pathetic loser. It has, oh, eh, look at these losers. Look how pathetic that is. Oh, look at that. That's so embarrassing and awkward. But there's always something added in. Like, yeah, humiliating, embarrassing, but then you get the gym teacher. Just can't take that bitch seriously. Or you get the... Tie it, just tie a knot in it, and then it'll fit. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Pee Wee, total fucking loser. But he wins, and everyone laughs at him. And high fives him all. Hank, yep. All right, you're a fucking loser, but you're our fucking loser. just seems seems like there's a little more empathy 1975's Monty Python and the Holy Grail I there was a time where I could quote the entire movie from start to finish with no cues, just with two other equally nerdy, awkward fucking losers. Two of us are still alive. None of us are successful. One of us was successful, but he's sadly stricken down with uh, medical shit. But successful and happy, and the kids are great. And one of the two remaining is happy. Me. The other one doesn't deserve the uh, misery, but... Someday, my friend. Someday. You will be dead. And then you won't be unhappy anymore. But you caused all of it. Young Frankenstein, 1974. That's another one where... Great fucking comedy. That... People see it now, and they're like, okay. Oh, yeah, that, that's cute. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that reminds me of this. Oh, that reminds me of that. Walk This Way. Aerosmith's big hit song. Right? Came from that. Young Frankenstein. What, hump? Put the candle back. Great stuff. And you can watch it and be like, oh, that's old and played out. Seen it a million times. But yeah, I'll admit that's funny. 
Yeah, but they're the ones that came up with it. Really? Dude, that must have been fucking hilarious when they first saw it. It was. It was so funny that they filtered it down into every fucking movie for a long time. Bad News Bears. Bad News Bears is a mediocre comedy. Mediocre. A unique premise that's interesting and had a lot of potential. And just Tatum O'Neill and fucking Walter Matthau made that mediocre comedy with a good present, good premise with great potential into reason why they remade it was they looked at that and saw man it's a great idea and they did a good job but fuck you can't replace Walter Matthau now let's get pre-bad Santa in there and ooh, we gotta find the right chick and oh, we can't so let's just find a talented pitcher and then shift everything yeah great premise bad news bears love it actually love the remake but, man, that premise is, oh. tell you what, if you could find the right way to present that, oh, wait, Mighty Ducks. Yeah, the Mighty Ducks is a better version of the Bad News Bears. It is. Now, you don't have Walter Matthau. And you don't have Tatum O'Neill. But, if you did, like, there is nothing you can say to tell me Bad News Bears is better than Mighty Ducks. Without saying Walter Matthau, Tabe O'Neill. Now, you might want to pull in uh, Jackie, Jackie Haley. Uh, no, no, he's uh, Jackie Earl Haley. Yeah. You might want to pull that one in. But love him. He did great. But until he had a resurgence, no one mentioned that part. Yeah. Bad News Bears, great. Missing a few things. Mighty Ducks, great. Better movie. Missing two things. Tatum O'Neill, Walter Matthau. Blazing Saddles. I won't mention anything about that. I have a video coming up at some point. The amazing, talented Splatter Vision. Talked about this, and I made some comments, but 
watch that. The Jerk. The Jerk is great. It is cheap comedy on things that you... It was offensive to talk about it in 1979. And people accepted it because it was funny. In Tropic Thunder, it was offensive, but hilarious, and you accept it. Because who are they poking fun at? Someone pretending to be a minority could be offensive. Uh, we look back at the old days, back when I was a kid in the 1900s. And, yes, a mass of me, Yeah. That's offensive. Because the butt of the joke is the minority. But the jerk did something new. It was absolutely cultural blackface and behaving ignorant and stereotypical of a black person. Oh, I love me some, right? Just But they weren't the bad person. It was everyone else being a dick. And I know I hear you typing. That's not what they did in Tropic Thunder. No, it's not. Um, in Tropic Thunder. It was, hear me out, the person doing the shit from the 1920s, the person doing blackface, but they were doing it so well and so good intentions. I'm... I was a saucy A in sin and tone. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to be an asshole. He's not trying to be racist. He's trying to portray a real life black person as he knows it. And then a actual black person is like, you motherfucker. What the fuck? He's like, I'm not racist. I'm I'm just being accurate and you motherfucker. And he calls him out. Because I will defend. Uh, Mickey Rooney for oh, let me be a Chinese person and do, 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 do. I'll defend him because nothing he did was racist. Because if you, I, people are like, oh, he did yellow face. First of all, that's a little bit racist. Uh, it's 
Sorry to wake you up, baby. Uh, when you wake up, can you answer this? Um, are you yellow? Because apparently all Asians or Orientals or... Look, people in the Philippines are yellow, apparently. I don't know if you're Asian or Philip. I don't know. Everything's stupid now. So yeah, yellow face. If you had gotten a Japanese or Chinese or Korean or God forbid Hollywood actually gets a fucking Filipino to play the role. People would look back at it and be like, oh, that's a stereotype and racist and offensive. So yeah, I'll defend Mickey Rooney on that. He wasn't being racist. The movie, the novel, the portrayal, that was it several levels racist. But fucking Robert Downey Jr. and Tropic Thunder not fucking racist. He is the butt of the joke. Black people, not rich, white, liberal females, but actual black people watch that movie and like, oh, slap that motherfucker. And it's like, yep, call his ass out. Motherfucker quotes the Jeffersons. Because he thinks that's going to fix it. We okay? No. No. We're not okay. But we'll get through it. And the character wasn't racist. The character was so fucking ignorant. That he was doing racist shit. And we all laughed at it. We, the punchline was, stupid asshole is so stupid. He's racist. He's racist and stupid. Or is he too stupid? No, he's not racist. Or is he too racist to admit that he's stupid? You know what? We can all join together and mock him. I won't drop the, I won't drop the voice till the DVD commentary. And if you take the time to check out the DVD commentary, yeah. Uh Pencilar calls my like, hey, wait, wait. Thought you don't drop it till the commentary. Oh. Mm, mm. Mm. Now, my boy's got Annie Hall listed now. next. Safe. Simple. Uh, let me go with the first lines on this section of the article, story. Woody Allen's comedy proved more powerful than the Force. Allen's neurotic masterpiece won both critical acclaim and the Best Picture Oscar over Star Wars. Comic-Con sin that shall never be forgiven. All right. Um...
should it have won best picture in the Oscars? Uh, well, let me check. 1977. That's Oh. I get it. Yeah. That's why. What? Uh, stupid Oscars website is stupid. And also stupid. Okay. All right. That's not 1977. Uh, damn it. So I was going to say, well, Rocky won uh, Best Picture. Uh, all right, nineteen seventy eight. Although it was the ones released in seventy seven, so all right. Toto. I've not decided yet on whether I'm going to call him Chris or Toto. All right. Uh, in Annie Hall. Goodbye, girl. Oh, that's a great movie. Julia. Better movie. Star Wars. Don't get to say. Oh, the turning point. Okay. Uh, yeah, I... Damn. Uh, all right, so turning point should have taken a bunch of the romance. Right? Julia should have taken a bunch of the drama. And the goodbye girl should have taken that's why. The goodbye girl was not well liked by the Academy apparently. See, you got the romance Competing between three movies, but ma two main ones. You got the drama competing between three movies. And then you got the comedy. Should be competing between two movies. See, I figured Annie Hall won over... Star Wars with its action and old school 1930s adventure classics. 70s were pretty snobby. Man, honestly, If there had been a better romantic comedy put out at that time, then Star Wars would have won the Oscar. But Annie Hall, Woody Allen's Annie Hall, ended up taking a majority of the comedy vote. And the comedy vote won over the action adventure. But yeah, Annie Hall shit me on the list. Sleeper. 
Wow. All right. Sleeper sucked. Sorry. Woody Allen sleeper fucking sucked. It did. It was funny. Yes. It was funny. But it was a fucking Saturday Saturday Night Live sketch. Stretched out. Uh, what's that movie that just came out? Night Swim. Great short film. Obviously, we can make it into a feature film. And... And they end up just making the short film and stretching it out to stupid levels. Sorry about that. There we go. Maybe that's a better angle. So, yeah. Sleeper. Nope. Foul play. Great comedy. Chevy Chase. Big part of why he is. But no. Burt Reynolds starting over. That's the Burt Reynolds you picked? No. All right, we'll go with starting over. Fine. Put that one on the list. What year did Stuntman come out? Because, motherfucker. If you are using that, is your Burt Reynolds 70s thing? Oh, there we go. Toto, Chris Toto, you're a fucking moron. Smokey and the Bandit was in the 70s. You're done. You're done. Play it again, Sal. Play it again, Sam. Aliens, Bananas, and Love and Death could have made the list. Let's round this hit Hollywood in Toto. Christian Toto. By the way, love you. Love you, dude. Alan turned the directorial reins over to Herbert Ross. For a Casablanca sequel. It failed. It failed. It fucking failed. It missed every mark. Willy Wonka in the comedy section. For the 70s. Solid film. Train. Solid film. I get it. All right. I'll take it. Not going to argue that. Uh, questionable. If you put a number on the list. You can get all technical on is it comedy? Look. Yeah. Solid. American graffiti. Thank you. Absolutely fucking thank you. 
that one should have been on there. And I will admit, I may not have thought of it. But if someone was like, oh, why is an American graffiti on the list? I would have been, what the fuck? Why is it on the list? Now, if uh, Mr. Toto wants to challenge me to make a list of 70s comedies that aren't on his list, absolutely will and absolutely would love to hear him fucking mock me. But yeah, uh, like I said, Hollywood in Tonto. Check out the website. I am a new fan, but a huge fan. And obviously, big enough fan to dedicate what was supposed to be like a 10 minute 10 to 15 minute window into lots of rambling. Yeah, it happens. Uh, so Tyson Fury. Um, apparently got a big cut. And the most important fucking boxing match of a generation. is delayed. Now there's lots of talk of Fury dodges this person and dodges that person. He fought Wilder three times. First time was close. You could argue his first loss. He was up on points. And then he got knocked the fuck out. And then used fucking Irish magic to jump up and finish the fight. Second fight. Humiliated Wilder. Third fight, he came in better. Honestly, the Fury Wilder fight was the best performance Wilder has ever done. And Fury was better. Fury could. Possibly beat Usyk. Fury should beat Usyk. There is no mathematics that makes Usyk the winner of the fight. I would say Nganu had a better chance than Usyk does. Damn it. Sorry, I gotta fuck in. I don't know if it's mustache sticking or the nose hair sticking. I don't know. Shit just fucking bugs me. Wilder is the knock him the fuck out. 
and Inganu, same thing. Dude, possibly, we don't know, or it's not been verified, but Inganu is a it's a harder punch than Wilder. But Inganu wears smaller gloves. Letter gloves. Harder punch. But Wilder's a professional fighter. Professional boxer. Honestly, if you had put Inganu in Wilder's fights throughout the career, I think not much would have changed. I think Inganu would have beaten most of Wilder's fights. Fury has a range. Hardest hitting fucking blah blah puncher ever and ever. Fought him with his game. Oh, got cut. That's what Fury does, or that's what Walter does. Game over. And Fury got up. Fuck. Irish magic. Next fight. Boom. Third fight. They both adjust. And yeah. Boom. Inganu Fury 2 ends with Inganu getting knocked the fuck out. Uh, the things that shitty things say about Fury seems like he dodges. Seems like he was dodging Joshua. People pro-Fury would say, no, he's just greedy. All right, option A, Tyson dodges Joshua. Option B, Tyson doesn't give a fuck about the fans, and he's chasing money. Now... There's some Fury fans that want to op argue option three. That no, he's not a fucking greedy, money-hungry prick that doesn't give a shit about his fans. He just... Whatever reason that doesn't involve dodging. But look, it's option one, dodging. Option two, money hungry, fuck the fans. I'm leaning towards two. But neither one surprises me. I think after the Wilder trilogy... I find it hard to believe that he was dodging Joshua. Now, I don't think that he's been dodging Usyk. I think he has been trying to get a bigger payday than the market allowed. 
And I think he took the Nganu fight. Because, well, fuck you. I can make a gajillion dollars fighting a UFC champ. And Nganu was better than he thought. Honestly, Nganu was better than Wilder. Watch all three Wilder fights. Nganu was better than that. And Joshua trying to cash in to schedule that Nganu fight. Ah. I don't think Joshua has anything to gain from it. I think that's a mistake from Joshua. Now, Zilly Zhang. I've said the name wrong. Fuck you. Don't be Chinese. Get a better name. But Zilly Zhang. Scheduling that fight makes sense. Because. They are running out of reasons. To avoid them. Joshua Joyce. Or whatever. Joyce. Dubois, Zhang, they're all three right there on the edge. And suddenly Nganu is a name on the edge. And Joshua, uh, let me pick him. Joshua did not pick that fight being smart Joshua picked that fight as a fuck you Tyson Fury he thinks if he does better than Fury then he can start to say uh, Fury's been dodging me okay makes sense not stupid with that, but you're doing the same stupid thing Fury did. Yes, Fury beat Nganu. Barely. Don't act like he's a fucking big name that doesn't matter. No. He's now an 0-1 boxer and a whatever, whatever UFC fucking champion who laid the world heavyweight and lineal champion on the fucking canvas. Don't just walk into that fucking fight. Silly Zhang, you beat Nganu, and you beat him better than Fury did, then you'd be like, hey, where's my chance? Joshua beats uh, Nganu more convincingly, more convincingly than Fury did. You get to say, I'm better than Fury. He dodged me. Can I have next? But you're risking Nganu. And then everyone going, wow. Fury beat Nganu. And he's better than Joshua. Joshua's never lost. Other than that fluke to Ruiz and to Usyk. So clearly Usyk is better than Joshua. Not as good, maybe as good as Usyk. And Fury beat him.
Yeah. Nothing to win there. All right. Yeah. Oh, damn it. I kept pushing it off. Now I got two political stories in a row. All right. I've not read this one. I picked it based on the headline. And my opinions on the topic. All right. So, Representative Burchett told Newsmax Mayoris broke the law lying under oath. Yeah. That's obvious. Uh, all right, so he's from Tennessee. So Mayorkas lied under oath, and that's what they got Richard Nixon for. Yeah. Actually, they didn't get Richard Nixon. Also, uh... They had Clinton for lying under oath and other stuff, but Senate was, and that's why it's all fucking political. So don't, don't pull up, oh, Richard Nixon did that. Yeah, cool. Who cares? Um, Mayorkas lied under oath. Yeah. Find one that has it. What did Mayorkas lie under oath for? Well, the FBI and, uh, Day in the first week of January. But you can't talk about that because it ends with stupid people from both sides saying stupid things. Uh, something stupid happened. In the first week of January. And the FBI was heavily involved in organizing that stupid thing. So, does that cancel it out? Do we just let all the people from the first week of January go and just say, all right, both sides were stupid. Canceled out. Or do you get actively involved to make sure the stupid people on this side and stupid people on this side pay the price? Well, the smart thing is Pardon them all. Fuck off. Uh, the FBI fucked up any possibility of that day being a thing because they were too cocky and arrogant. They were not Randy Weaver smart. Not that Randy Weaver was smart. I mean, they weren't smart like they were when they murdered Weaver's family. And they weren't smart 
like when they murdered a bunch of people at Waco. Some were innocent. It's just, oh, fucking hell. I cannot stand by and say it's cool to storm the Capitol. It wasn't cool when pro Palestinian people did it. it. Wasn't cool when it happened any of the other times. But I'm not going to pretend. Number 17 is different from numbers 1 through 30. So calm the fuck down. Stop calling it insurrection. Because it was a fucking half-assed riot. They got trumped up to more than it was. I mean, motherfuckers did the same thing in Tennessee and had actual fucking state congressmen involved, caught, and convicted. And it, oh, bub, 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 bub. fuck off. All right, just fuck off. You show me video of someone doing something shitty on that day at that place, and it was all recorded. And I will stand up and be like, can't I kick him in the balls ten times before you send him to prison? But you tell me, an old ass woman, send her to prison. All right, what'd she do? Oh, she was in the, yeah. What did she do? FBI done fucked up. Being there isn't a crime. That's entrapment. At worst, at best, it's invited in. So yeah, calm the fuck down on that. Let's punish the criminals and stop the politics. Alright. We have to find out another story. Because I'm not ending on two fuck yous. Senate GOP blocks bipartisan border package that includes foreign aid in key vote. And they got a picture of McConnell and Schumer just looking longingly at each other on how we can fuck everybody over. So, $118 billion includes 20 billions in efforts to address the historically... All right, $20 billion, $118 billion of... Our money, lefties, righties, and us in the middle, $20 billion of our money, of a $118 billion package, goes to address the border. Okay. $60 billion to Ukraine. 
Eh, not a border bill. $14 billion for Israel. Okay. Not a border bill. So, 60 plus 20 is 80. Plus 14 is uh, 94. So, that leaves... What? Mm, 26... Nope, wait. Uh, yeah. 22 billion left out. Okay. Uh, illegal immigrants got it. 650 for illegals. 450. Okay. So we're at about a billion and 20 Republicans argued we supported a negotiation and it ends with uh, Vance out of Ohio. All right, so it failed, and Schumer is now going to set up a vote on the supplemental package without the border bill. Gotcha. So, throwing $60 million in on a $1.2 billion bill for the border and calling it the border bill didn't work. Now, my stance on the border is let us do what Canada does. What Mexico does let us do what Senegal does on our border and if you disagree with that then I am absolutely open to hear your opinions. But if you say racism, then you clearly did not look into any of that. At all. Now, as for Ukraine, my thoughts are let's have a referendum on the American public on whether they think we should give money to Ukraine or not. It's democratic, and I will stand by that. And then, from there, we can address how much money, how much aid, what type of aid, and how much money we can give Ukraine. For their issue. Putting. The two things together. Is shitty. It's awful. 
see, we get this situation where let's propose a don't murder gay people and not slap black people bill that gives 20 bucks to uh not killing gay people by proposing a fund to pay for attorneys for gay hate crimes and twenty dollars for uh paying for lawyers to attack racist crimes and sixty dollars to give to Taiwan to build up their missiles to fight China. And yeah, I kept it small, $100. And everybody's like, well, I, I don't want to kill gay people and I don't want to slap black people. So I'll vote yes. Oh, cool. Here's $100 to not kill gay people, not slap black people. Also, we're giving missiles to Taiwan. Oh! What the fuck? Now, would you give $100 over the year to pay for attorneys to protect gay people on gay hate crimes? Yes. Would you give $100 to pay for lawyers to protect black people against hate crimes? Yes. Would you give $100 to protect our friends Taiwan from the imminent invasion and attack and insults from China. Um, maybe yes, maybe no. And I don't know. I would. I think it's noble. Plus, some people are like, well, yeah, I sympathize with them, but fuck them. I don't want to give them my money. That's fair. Putting all three on the same thing is wrong. I would like... And nobody will ever, in politics, agree, because as soon as you do, you're done, you're gone. How about we make a law where you can't fucking make a bill... That includes different topics. And I know that will make the defense bill difficult and awkward. Well, we can't just say, hey, uh, best bill to fund our military. I get it. That will be annoying and complicated and difficult. 
But yes, that's what government is. Can we get Congress to agree to give $20 million to fund our military on training and health care? Oh, whoa, whoa, that's different stuff. How much do you want for training the military? Uh, the military wants this much money. Yeah, how much money does the government want for training? Uh, this much. Cool. How much does the government want for health care? Uh, this much. How much does the military want for housing? Uh, this much. And then you look at the spending and go, well, we spent this much on housing. Oh, you're only budgeted this much. Oh, we spent this much on housing. Oh, oh, what'd you do with the rest of the amount? Um, uh, well, see what I'm saying? Let's fucking eliminate the add-ons. Stop giving a defense contract for this much. Yeah, fuck you. Military spending for this much. All right, better. All right, this much money goes to the military, and you show what you spend it on. But this much for defense? That's pretty vague. Eh. All right, so I am going to find... Uh, something close out. And I know a news article's worst choice. But I have faith. Oh! Here we go. Boom. Also, I've not read this. This was just on the spot. But let's read this together. By the way, uh, Publica. Homeless man was gifted almost half a million after... TikTok went viral. It is a violent criminal who assaulted a woman. Holy fuck balls. No. That is not fucking heartwarming. Ugh. All right. No, I got this. I can fix this. See, I just read heartwarming, homeless, and blah, blah, blah. No, I can fix this. I got it. I got it. Uh. 
All right, here we go. All right, now I'm stretching, but nope, I got it. Q. All right. I would like to say that I have always thought that I am the easiest to shop for. I appreciate I appreciate someone swinging for the fences right uh secret santa got me socks which again oh <laughs> I dig socks, right? I got some Ghostbuster socks. And I got some ugly socks. And this is a pair that I wore together. Uh, I picked up my laundry but I still, oh, I've got, uh, This is, I think this is it. No, no, these are Chucky, more Ghostbusters. Ugly colors. So or ugly socks is what they call it. Friday the 13th. Sesame Street. The board game, sorry. Yeah, I got a whole sock series on, uh, board games. And this one is Sylvester the Cat. So, yes. I fucking adore when someone is like, hey, here's a really cheap Stupid gift idea. Man. 
Man, I think you would dig. So, escape room, uh, boring ass board games. Uh, more board games. Here we go. There are weird ass dorky fucking people that obsess over snack food. And I don't know if you're aware, but I think it's Kit Kat. In Japan, they've got like 70,000 flavors. I tortured a co-worker <laughs> telling the story of where breakfast cereal comes from and how it was. A Kellogg doctor trying to prevent masturbation. Yeah. Take a little, take a little time, talk to a person, and like, well, they're fucking weird and awkward. I have no fucking clue. The fuck would they want? What would they like? It doesn't make sense to me. Don't have to make sense to you. There are weird fucking bullshit things. That even if it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't like it. They'll still be like, that is so weird and awkward. Dude, that motherfucker actually put in a little time and effort. And found some weird ass shit. Yeah, I'm pretty fucking weird, so I get it. This is why everyone, everyone comes to me. Hey, I don't know what to get for this person. I'm like, all right, I gotcha. They'll love it or they'll hate it, but they'll fucking, <laughs> they'll have a reaction. Are you okay with them going, what the fuck? You're cool with that? Absolutely. I'll get your gift for you. Listen, there's some crazy batshit fucking people out there. Losers and winners are both batshit crazy. Just some are better at hiding it. If you have a stupid fucking idea, like, oh, this stupid, they might like it. Do it. Worst case scenario, I don't like this. Why would you? Oh, well, fuck you. You know what? I waste my time. Don't worry about it. You weren't worth the gift anyways. Someone gives me the stupidest fucking weirdest awkward fucking gift ever. I'm like, dude, why? Why? Well, I, I don't know. Seems like. You wear different colored socks, so maybe you'd be into a uh, foot fungus research center. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fucking weird as shit. I'm not, but hell yeah. Fuck it. 
fun gift. I'll be talking about this for years. Dude, someone was looking at my colored socks. They were like, oh, foot fetish. Absolutely wants to get the third person biography of that guy that directed Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Totally <laughs> gonna be the thing of the gift giving event. Like, oh. I won't be offended. And if I am offended, then fuck me. I didn't deserve the gift anyways. Anyways. Uh, time to end this. And I need to get back to polishing my miniatures. And don't worry, I'm not a nerd. I'm not talking about Warhammer 4K miniatures. No. No. I am talking about a complete set of Anne and Green Gable Anne of Green Gables miniatures. Alright? They are all period correct. And wearing the proper clothing for the time period. And I know we get shitty on the heights, right? Is this one five eight, five four, five ten? See, we base this on how vulnerable. Listen, you can bump up their height a little bit for aesthetic value. Just change the coloring, the clothing, and that can make them a little more vulnerable. It's just basic common sense. Well, like I was saying, I'm normal on all this stuff, but some people are a little weird about their hobbies. And you don't know what those hobbies are. And you probably won't know the details. But if you think something could be, they might love it or they'll laugh at me for uh, trying, then you're in the right. If you think they're going to get mad at you for getting it wrong, they don't deserve a gift. They're probably one of those fucking people that would give Anne of Anne of Green Gables fucking strawberry blonde hair. Like, who well, dig it? Fuck you. Just fuck you. Right? We can all agree on that. It's just shitty. I mean, Anne of Green Gables clearly has specifically what is that doing? Anyways, she comments on the raven hair having trouble oh well that's cool thank you that's lovely the fuck does the internet have to do with a fucking recording sorry All right, we are going to try.
seriously, this whole fucking thing is just annoying. Oh. 